At this point, we've covered the stroke curve and shown how, and we've added a template so we can see the current stroke data, uh, which is a solid line compared against the dashed line, which is the template. The next step is to add the injection pressure curve. So we'll add a curve, plastic pressure, injection. And now we've got our next set of data that we'll explore. So let's wait till the start of the next cycle where we'll be watching as the screw comes forward, we can see the filling stage of the curve, the fast pressurization. A trans at transfer, we go into second stage or hold pressure. At the end of injection forward, we go into screw recovery. We can see the back pressure. And at the end of the cycle, there's nothing happening with either the screw position or the injection pressure. So let's look at these in a little bit more detail. Uh, first, let me zoom in. I'm going to click and drag in to the first. Uh, we're at going from the, the graph is going from zero to 1.5 seconds, and we can see during the injection portion of the curve that uh, we can see the, the 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 filling stage. This point right here is where transfer occurs. Uh, we go transfer out of first stage or fill into second stage into our hold pressure. And we'll notice, uh, first of all, that we're not quite matching our template. What's wrong here? Uh, well, it appears that we're reaching transfer position just a little bit faster than we did uh, on the template the dash line here. And we can see the same thing in the screw position. So if we come back to our fill speed and adjust it, let's see if we can get these two curves to match up a little bit better. We'll wait for just a moment for the start of the next cycle. And here we go. Now we're matching both curves very closely. We're matching the original documented process much better. So that's one of, and again, part of the power of, of process monitoring is be able to see where we're matching the saved process and where we aren't, and being able to use that information to, to adjust the process. The other thing we'll see is that uh, in the injection pressure curve, when we transfer into second stage or hold, we don't immediately get reach hold pressure. Uh, at this point, we're at just a little over a half second, and it's almost one second before the hold pressure fully stabilizes here. So we're almost taking half a second for this press to transfer and stabilize. If we try to move this mold to another press that has a faster response where it gets to hold pressure sooner or a slower response where it takes longer to get to hold pressure, that will have an impact on the process as well. And so we can see the performance of the machine in the curve. Let's go ahead and zoom out to full scale again. <clears throat> this is zero to 22 seconds. And so we can see fill pack. Our hold pressure is very stable. We can see that we're running uh, right around 5,600 PSI hold pressure. And we can tell our hold time, our, inj or our injection forward time, is right around eight seconds. If we change our injection forward time, That will show up here. We'll have to wait for the next cycle for that to, uh, to take. So let's give the cycle just a moment. 
What do we expect to happen? Our injection forward uh, was at eight seconds. We changed it to seven seconds. So we would expect that the curve would drop about right there. So we can see that our injection forward time has been changed, is no longer matching the process. So that's another piece of information that we can see about the, about the process. Let's go ahead and set that back to eight seconds. And in the meantime, we can look at screw recovery. What's happening during screw recovery here is we're seeing this pressure, which is the back pressure. Our back pressure is set to 1,000 PSI, which uh, may sound high if you're thinking about hydraulic pressure, but this is actually the plastic pressure. So uh, we can see that plastic pressure. Uh, we can see the back pressure. We can also see an interesting little spike here that's, that's related to the valve response, a detail that we normally wouldn't be able to see if we were just looking at the, uh, the, the press settings. So that's a quick overview of what some of the things we can see in the in injection pressure curve is the filling stage, the pack and hold stage, screw recovery and back pressure. Some of the measurements we can see are fill time, we can see hold pressure, hold time, back pressure, screw recovery time, and as we mentioned by zooming in, we can even see uh, the response of the press. So that's an overview of some of the things that we can see with the injection pressure curve.